terms of responsive planning, I think it's really important that um, for practitioners, they, they really meet the needs of the child. Um, they get to know the child and they really need to use their observations well. So, um, because I think you can't really talk about responsive planning without talking about observations. So I think it's um, about noticing and noticing what the child notices and really tuning into them. And then planning for nurturing their curiosities, their schemas, their interests, you know, finding out what they know, finding out what the children already know from their previous experiences and draw on that and extend. So I think the planning needs to meet the children's needs and interests and, and support them to develop and learn and make progress. I think practitioners really need to watch and listen to children and then reflect on what they see and hear and use the information then that they know about that child to plan future learning experiences, to plan the resources in the learning environment and to plan for children to learn through play and playful experiences. And I think they have to have an element of planning for the role of the enabling adult so that all the practitioners know how to support that child in the learning environment and you know in using the resources and through their learning experiences and then I think all of that will help the child um, to make progress. So responsive planning to me is making sure that we focus on effective pedagogy and play and play-based learning, making sure that the children are outdoors and that are having authentic and purposeful learning opportunities. What we want them to do is to have natural conversations with children and through a conversation, teachable moments are very natural. That practitioner knowing also when they do need to have that stepping in element, when they do need to stand back and notice and analyse that, um, or do I need to step in, as Lynn said, really, and do that teachable moment. Um, to develop those concepts really is what we're doing and that thinking um, for those young children. Now you are very much looking for teachable moments and this quite often can be standing back and taking the time to notice where the child is at and the staff have had to be on a big learning journey to hold back and let the child lead the play and look for those moments when you can interact and perhaps ask more open so instead of saying or oh, how many blocks have you got in there and say oh your tower is really tall haven't you made a wonderful tower I can see do you think you could make it any taller and also just having that time to observe and for a while I said to the staff I don't want you to do much else but to observe because then you will see when it's right to step in and and assist or see a teachable moment and when it's not because we can stop the play and we can stop the learning by stepping in, particularly for some of those children, if they are newer to the setting and are perhaps a little bit more shy or a little bit hesitant, the staff member stepping in actually can stop the learning because they become hesitant or they become, you know, they'll become a bit more reserved. When we've been upskilling our staff in terms of the enabling adult, we have looked at developing our skills in observation. And one of the things that we've looked at tuning into is children's fascinations. So what makes them tick kind of when they're three and four? What really interests them? What motivates them? What do they keep returning to? And this will help kind of inform practitioners so we can move their learning forward by taking into account those fascinations and building on their current experiences and their previous experiences to move their learning forward and to ensure pr progression. We've been working with our staff um, here in our setting to ensure that we uh, allow for children's conceptual development. So we've done a lot of work on what the experiences are for our children within our setting. So what does life look like for three and four year olds outside the setting and how we can build upon those experiences so they have first-hand authentic experiences. And within those rich engaging experiences, we can 
incorporate so many of those dispositions for learning and ensure that they have a, a real life experiences of these certain concepts. So if lots of the experiences are open ended, for example, cooking, when we look at cooking, we have such a rich experiences of looking at literacy, reading recipes, um, counting, measuring, predicting and estimating. We're handling small tools and developing our fine motor skills and you know, taking photographs as we do it so we can reflect on that process and talk about developing children's oracy and sequencing what happens next. Those concepts and those skills that they have in a very small cookery session um, with a qualified practitioner gives them those concepts that then when they may be playing independently in other areas of the setting, so when they make their own Play-Doh, that those concepts are um, revisited then. So they have that thorough kind of understanding of things like wet and dry or sticky. Um, they've got concepts of large and full and empty. So we're ensuring that they've got a broad and balanced curriculum so that the environment is set up in such a way that the experiences they have are very rich and open-ended.